Well, my name is Anita Hill. And I'm Kim Clark. I've been in Poplar Bluff since 1983. I've been in Poplar Bluff my entire life. I grew up in a rural rum bar in Fisk area, and then I've lived in Poplar Bluff once I became an adult. Well, uh, just about anything locally sparks our interest, especially if it has to do with uh, helping people in our own community, people that we know or a friend of a friend, we will be asked to participate and uh, help out and help raise money for good local causes. Sure. It's a uh, Alzheimer's Association because her grandfather and father was involved in that. And then the American Cancer Society. Uh, Kim got us involved in that because her mother and her brother died from cancer. So she got us involved in that one. And this year we got involved with UCAN. Uh, because it's more local than the Relay for Life. Uh, still a great cause, however, uh, we like doing the local stuff, but like yeah. as she said, uh, you know, we've just started getting with Davine and uh, getting involved with that. Yeah, I got us going on that, didn't I? The cruising nights, that's also something for you, can because uh, we like classic cars, and we decided to have lemonade stand there, and David said, okay. So <laughs> we did that. Yeah. And I was thinking back on the time that you got us involved with the Haven House uh, Haunted House. Yes. And that was to raise money. That was Yeah, oh, that was Kiwanis. To, that, see, I get confused on them. That was to raise money for the accessible playground. Right. I also do Haven House. Uh, I'm a volunteer there. Since I was a, I'm a nurse at a local facility, uh, Melody seemed to think that I would be good at being an advocate for any of the women that came in uh, abused to the ER. Now, I can also remember you got us involved at the first red, white, and blue party they had at the camp. That was the Relay for Life. That was yes. for American Cancer Society. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think Kim gets us involved in just about anything she can find on Facebook. <laughs> and she finds everything in the DAR. <laughs> yeah, I'm a newspaper reader. I read your DAR. So, yeah, I figure, you know, if we can go there and lend a hand, that's probably the best thing to do with our timing. You know, it, it's just good for uh, us. It's good for the community. And it sets a good example, hopefully, for the youth, that they'll try to be helpful instead of harmful to people. What kind of sparked that need to involve yourself with the community? Well, I tell you what, I uh, retired from working on the ambulance after 30 years. And when you just see one tragedy after another, day in, day out, you realize when you're off duty, you want to do something that makes you feel good about life, yourself, the community. Uh, get something good instead of looking at the bad all the time that you see uh, people in accidents or people that are ill. That's, it's just such a sad and depressing thing. It can be rewarding, but you can see the downside of having that day in and day out. And I think sure. Kim experienced that from working in the ICU. ICU and ER. You realize how blessed you are just to have your health, uh, let alone uh, we have uh, means that where we were able to help the community and you know it, I love this community it's it's a great place to, to grow up and I raised our, our son uh, here and he's turned out pretty well and so I think that's a good way to get back yeah yeah I think we're lucky to live here I remember when I moved here seeing Louis Snyder's uh, quote, isn't it nice to live in Poplar Bluff? And I was from a very small town, <laughs> uh, population uh, 500 in By Burnham. And when I came to Poplar Bluff and I seen that and I seen the community and all the different activities, I thought, you know, this is a wonderful place to live. And, you know, I grew up at Doctor's Hospital working there on sure. the ambulance and, you know, have had many dear friends through the years there. I've watched them uh, come and go and their kids and took care of them and we go to events and you get to see a lot of those old friends that if you stayed home and just watched TV, you wouldn't get to interact with any old uh, friends out there. True. So congratulations to Kim Clark and Anita Hill for being nominated for um, the Difference Maker Award with the Daily American Republic. So I call them the dynamic duo because of all they do 
for our community. And so you guys are amazing. I love all the work you've done. You have been an inspiration to me personally as well as other people in our community to get out and get involved. So congratulations and I hope you enjoy your evening with us here tonight. My name is Wally Duncan. Uh, I am an attorney here in Popper Bluff and I have been practicing here in Popper Bluff for 35 years now. Uh, I also own Heritage Title Company which is uh, right next door and uh, I have uh, lived in Poplar Bluff off and on uh, since uh, the uh, eighth grade. My family moved here when I was in the eighth grade and I ended up finishing high school here. Left for college and I came back after college and actually taught at uh, Poplar Bluff Junior High School for three years before I went to law school at uh, what was then Memphis State University. Now it's the University of Memphis. And I had an opportunity to come back to Poplar Bluff after that uh, and work for Mark Kennedy, who at that time was the Butler County Prosecuting Attorney. So I, I came back and uh, brought my wife and uh, then my, my young son Eric here. And uh, we started uh, here and, and I began practicing law and working in the prosecutor's office and I've been here ever since. You were nominated uh, for this award because of your work with the Historic Rogers Theater. So would you tell us just briefly uh, about your work with the theater restoration? Well, I, I guess the best way to start would be to tell you how I got involved. Uh, it, it was, um, I believe it was 2016. Uh, for some, I was driving down the street, probably coming back from the courthouse, and for some reason I, I took particular notice of the theater. And it, it just looked to me like the, the marquee was about to fall down. And uh, I happened to know that Brent Davis, who's a friend of mine, was on the board. And so I just called him and said, Brent, I'm concerned about the marquee. Is there something that some of us can do to help you guys out? You do a great job, but maybe, maybe we can do something to help. Uh, next thing I know, I'm on the board. And it wasn't too long after that that uh, I was elected president. And so that's really how I got involved in it, mainly by just making an inquiry as to what I could do to help uh, with the effort because it's such a beautiful building and such a, a big part of Popper Bluff, I just hated the idea of it just falling down and the community losing that. I thought that would really be a, a tragedy to lose that building. And what is it that inspires you to devote so much time to the theater project? Well, I think it's several things. Uh, one of them, like I said, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful building. It's one of a kind. There, there's not a building like it in the world. And, you know, it, it has a lot of uh, historical significance for Popper Bluff. It has a lot of architectural interest for, uh, for Popper Bluff and the surrounding community. It, uh, it, it is now, obviously, a, a venue for live performance. And so it's, it's offered an opportunity for uh, local artists uh, local musicians to, to be able to perform there. It, it gives them an outlet and uh, I'm a local musician so that's a particular interest to me also and, and uh, it, it's just one of those things that Popper Bluff does not need to lose. Popper Bluff uh, needs to have something that it can be proud of and I think the Rogers Theater is something that people are proud of and can be proud of once again and it's it's such an iconic part of the, of the community and those of us who are involved in it feel like that it can be maybe the cornerstone of a downtown revitalization. And so we want to do everything we can to preserve that. It, it would just be such a shame to lose that. Popper Bluff has, has lost so many buildings downtown over the years, I mean beginning with the tornado. There was a huge tornado in 1927 and um, you know, from there on, it seems like downtown uh, has lost so much, and, and we got an opportunity here to, to save something. And so that's, that's a lot of my motivation for that. Congratulations, Wally Duncan, on making a difference in our hometown. Downtown Popper Bluff is so lucky to have your vision, your enthusiasm, and your energy in restoring the Rogers Theater. You have volunteered many hours in this project, especially obtaining grant money to repair the roof. Now we can continue to see those magical Christmas movies, various plays, and musical shows for many years to come. I know you'll continue to volunteer for this project to bring the theater back to the magnificent piece of architecture it once was. We appreciate your time and dedication in being a game changer 
and a difference maker in restoring the Rogers. Thanks, Wally, for making Popper Bluff a nicer place to live and visit. Miranda Pickert. I have been in Poplar Bluff all my life. I actually grew up in a little town outside of um, Poplar Bluff called Stringtown, so born and raised, except for the time we spent at college. Um, we love spending time on Current River. I love being outdoors with my boys, just traveling and, and you know, just hanging out with them, really. Introduce any organizations that you're really active with and uh, any organi local organizations that you support. Sure. My baby is St. Jude, of course. So, Poplar Bluff Heroes is uh, the group I'm most involved in. Over the years, I've been involved in the Boys and Girls Club. Um, right now, I'm uh, on their board. I work also with the Badge of Honor Benefit Run, so I'm pretty involved in that. And then Kiwanis Club. Yeah, you know, I believe, I feel like... If you have the capability that you should give back. So for me, it's really just about making sure that I'm doing my part to do things for others. Um, I can make a difference, so I want to take the time and do that. Yeah, my passion is, um, you know, it's, it really it makes me feel good helping other people. I love seeing the difference that it makes for others and, and seeing the good that comes out of, you know, just giving your time and your effort and pulling a group together for a bigger cause. Miranda, I am so excited and so honored to have nominated you for the Difference Maker 2019 Award. Your heart, your soul, your passion for helping others shine through. And you have taken something as small as a mustard seed of faith and grown it to something imaginable that I can't, I'm just beyond words and so proud of you and your efforts. Congratulations, my friend. So excited to see you up on that stage. All right, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Eddie Flanagan. I currently live in Missouri, but I'm formerly from Arkansas. A Razorback, hard being a Razorback in the Tiger country. I enjoy it now. I lived in uh, Missouri for about uh, probably 31 years now. Feel part of it now. So good that I even started a 4-H club. They helped me out a lot. I had a heart attack about six and a half, seven years ago, and kids did for me at Kewen in the high school encouraged me to do that. I said, I'm going to give them back as much as what they gave me, and I think we're working on that. We've got, uh, I've got actually three clubs now. I have a high school club that I meet with, and I meet with the middle school. And I have another person, Nancy Morse, who does the elementary for me. I can't keep up with the elementary kids, okay? <laughs> so, that's the reason she does it. But yes, we, we're pretty diversified at it. We enjoy it. I had about 67 members, I think, last year is what it was. So it's growing for us. Why did you think it was important for the kids to have something like that? Well, it was... Uh, First of all, nobody knew what it was. They'd never heard of it or never done it. And I uh, after I kind of explained it to them and showed them what we were going to do, they enjoyed it. And uh, we have got to do a lot of things. We made trips uh, to Jonesboro, to Nature Center, and uh, we just currently did another trip. And uh, it was a little bit shorter, but uh, uh, we got some more planned coming up, so we got... I don't keep them letting them sit still too long. Why are the skills that you're you're teaching them through this club, why are they important? Why are they important? Okay, they're just, they really want to accomplish something. Something personal for them and it helps with their family and their community. We do quite a bit of community service. We clean up the city of Kewlin, our city of Kewlin, and we keep the schoolyards clean at uh, various schools that we have, and uh, we just do quite a bit of community stuff. We'll be working at the uh, Kewlin Homecoming before long, get the streets ready for that, and, and uh, help with the services of the other people, getting things set up. So yeah, we, can, we keep them busy. Have I seen change? Yes, I have. I, a lot of kids are starting to take on a lot more responsibility than what they were before. We've got several that are 
got like three that are good state con state 4-H Congress, and uh, they really enjoy that. So they're they're seeing things besides more than what they probably normally would. First, I mean, it's a, I've always been pretty friendly at school. They've always known me. But uh, after this heart attack, and saw the, and I wish they could have brought it, but the number of notebooks I have with, of, uh, you know, get well things for me, like three notebooks and almost a couple of suitcases, <laughs> but uh, it had a pronoun effect upon you. And uh, it made me kind of get weak here. But, uh, you know, it was just something that they responded to, and I'm trying to respond back to them. And this is about the, not the only way, but the best way I could figure I could help them. Hi, my name is Stephanie Milner, and I work at the University of Missouri Extension Office. I've known Ed for over seven years as a 4-H leader and Extension Council member. He has one of the largest clubs in the county and has made leaders out of many of the kids. I appreciate all you do, and I was more than happy to nominate you for this award. Thank you, Ed. My name is Christy Frazier Moore, and I have lived in Popper Bluff for longer than I probably want to say my age. I grew up in Eminence, but moved here to attend Three Rivers College back in the 90s. I'm involved in several organizations, but probably the top three that really come to mind right now are I am on the Black River Coliseum Advisory Board with Bobby Godwin, and then I am also on the Three Rivers Endowment Trust Board, which I love. I love going back to that college that gave so much to me. And then I am also very proud of the next one, which is called Chi and Company, and everybody says it wrong, but Chi and Company. I go into the junior high and talk with the girls every month on kindness, self-esteem, um, those types of issues that may be going on in their world, maybe not so much mine, but as a junior high girl, it's a really tough age, and I bring guests in, and they uh, share their experiences and life stories to help these girls realize that they're not alone, and they can muddle through it. <laughs> and so, how did you get into volunteering, and why do you volunteer? I don't know if I really have an answer for that specifically. I think it probably stems back to my childhood, to my mother. Um, growing up in a very small town, there wasn't a lot of activities. We had no movie theater, we had no bowling alley, nothing like that. We did have a skating rink, but we were just thrown into the community and we were always out helping, doing, um, just really trying to stay busy. I think what it comes down to, she was trying to keep us kids busy. Um, so I think it comes back to my mom and, and her instilling the values of giving back to others and helping others that maybe can't help themselves. The Difference Makers, what an exciting night this will be. Christy Frazier Moore is my nominee. I have known her for the past 16 years and worked with her through many community organizations such as the March of Dimes, Women Aware, and countless others. She is such an asset to our community, and I am so proud that she formed Chi and Company two years ago to help area girls uh, with lots of issues that they struggle with and, and interacts with them on a monthly basis at our local junior high. Uh, I think that's about 400 girls to be exact. So what an um, encouragement she is to those girls. So, good luck, Christy, and what a difference you are making. I'm Charles Harper. <clears throat> Most people call me Charlie. Uh, my wife and I and our two children moved to Poplar Bluff in uh, 1988. Uh, the first few years here I worked at First Baptist Church, and uh, mm -hmm. then I began teaching for Poplar Bluff schools in 1998. Uh, <clears throat> first at the 5th and 6th grade center, and I've been at the high school for the last 10 years or so. I uh, teach Spanish there, and I uh, also coach the uh, boys' uh, tennis team and uh, the girls for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. One of the groups that I um, spend the most time working with and I'm very uh, uh, supportive of and proud of is the Poplar Bluff Regional Giving Circle. Uh, <clears throat> I've been a part of it since it uh, began in uh, 2012, I believe that was. Uh, we're a group that uh, uh, supports all of the uh, nonprofit charities in Poplar Bluff. Uh, we uh, give grants to them from the uh, funds collected from the Giving Circle members. Uh, I'm also on the uh, board of and volunteer with the Caring Hands Medical Clinic. 
a uh, <clears throat> free medical clinic that uh, provides care for uh, un- and underinsured people in Poplar Bluff. Uh, they see patients every one Saturday each month at the, uh, we're housed at the uh, First Methodist Church in Poplar Bluff. Why do you do this? Why do you volunteer? One of the, uh, I guess, driving forces in my life is the, I guess what you would call the Lord's Prayer, part of that, when it says, uh, that the prayer is, I will be down on heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, and uh, I just feel like uh, part of my purpose in life is trying to uh, bring that about and uh, uh, <clears throat> make the world a better place in some small way. What inspires you? Well, probably uh, my parents were my uh, earliest inspiration. Uh, they, uh, they're not with us any longer, but that's uh, watching them uh, do what they do and uh, change the world in a lot of ways. Uh, they were uh, missionaries in South America all my life growing up. Also, uh, probably one of the people that inspired me the most is my uh, wife. Uh, she's uh, Recently retired, just this year retired as a kindergarten teacher in Poplar Bluff, and uh, she is one of the greatest examples of a, uh, a difference maker in my mind, and uh, loves children, and uh, just works hard to help everybody, uh, not just kids, but her colleagues, and uh, she's always encouraged and cheered me on, and uh, she's probably one of my greatest inspirations. Congratulations, Charlie. I'm proud of you for even getting this far. Uh, the reasons I nominated you is because all the things that you do for your community that you would never brag on yourself, but you are a doer and you do make a difference, and I want people to know that. Thank you. I'm Catherine Janine Ferguson Harris, and I did graduate from Neelyville High School and after graduating from high school, I went to Ohio, attended Cleveland State University, and taught school in Ohio for a number of years. In fact, I remained in Ohio for 17 years, then married there, my husband, who was also a teacher. And uh, I may have failed to say that I was a teacher um, as in my career. We have two children, Kevin, who now lives in Nashville, and Lori, who lives in Illinois, Shiloh, Illinois. But we came back to the Poplar Bluff area in 1979. And in 1980, I started to teach at Neelyville Elementary School, taught there, for another about 17 years. And then I went to work at the college, Three Rivers, as their director of the ta talent search program. And that was especially rewarding after a career in teaching because I had an opportunity to work with such a diverse group of people from 18 different school districts and I felt like I had something to offer them. And then in 2010, I officially retired from Three Rivers, but I went back there and worked half time until July of 2011. After retirement, I really started to get involved in volunteering. I was already doing the Wheatley program which is a succeeding in school program that focuses on helping every child become the best student possible. I did that and I also have worked with Designing Women Foundation that I enjoy. It's a literacy program founded by uh, Linda Bloodworth Thomas. And uh, I have worked with Community Resource Council for a number of years, and that is really uh, allowing me to create within that organization for the pa passion that I have for helping others. Um, I've 
conducted many sessions with, um, as I said, the tutoring program. I've done the Super Kids Camp since 2010, which is a summer program that actually targets students in kindergarten through the sixth grade. We build on the skills they've learned in their regular school year, and then we try to introduce them to social skills that might help them also better adjust in their classrooms. We do things like character education and um, just taking them to um, cultural things like the museums uh, in the area and also uh, swimming in the library, an occasional movie just for fun. So I feel like the entertainment is as important too because you need to know how to behave in all settings and it helps the children to better adjust. What is it that inspires you to devote so much time to the community and the community's children? I have a passion for education, first of all. Secondly, I was raised in a home that promoted helping others. And that's what I do. I, I love being in a community that allows the citizens to give back. Congratulations to Katherine Harris for being nominated as a Difference Maker. Thank you for the many years you have dedicated to nurturing, mentoring, and educating the children in our community. Thank you for supporting the mission of Butler County Community Resource Council and other community organizations. You make a difference in the lives of children and families in Butler County. My name is Shelley Pletsey and I'm a volunteer at Sacred Heart School and I've been doing the job for about 26 years. Uh, some of those years were paid. Uh, the last year was total volunteer. I pretty much worked full time all year. Uh, I have a loving husband named Bruce and two great uh, daughters, Lauren and Kristen. I'm originally from the St. Louis area. I attended Southwest Missouri State University. I have a BS degree in accounting. And when I had my children, I stopped being an accountant. And when they came to Sacred Heart, then I decided to start helping around the school and the church. Tell us a little bit about your daughters. Uh, they're both uh, professional in their careers. Uh, the oldest works for the Army Corps of Engineers in Huntsville, Alabama. She's an interior designer and she designs medical offices and clinics and she travels. The youngest is an orthopedic hand surgeon and she's currently living in Indianapolis, Indiana doing a hand fellowship and they were both students at Sacred Heart. What are your, some of your interests and hobbies outside of volunteerism? Uh, I love to garden. I uh, was a past member of the Poplar Bluff Garden Club. I'm still an associate member. Uh, I do some service work for the church, and I try to volunteer as much as I can. So when did you first realize that you had a heart for service? When, when was your first call to serve? Even as a youngster or you know, a, a young adult, what, what brought you to service? Well, I'm a family of, uh, I have uh, eight brothers and sisters, so we were a large Catholic family in the St. Louis area, and my parents instilled in us hard work and service, and I'm able to uh, not work at the present time, and so I just feel like, you know, someone has to do it, and I'm hoping that someone is me. So how do you feel your faith has influenced your service life? Well, I'm very blessed that God gave me this opportunity, gave me the loving school, the loving children, and I'm just happy to be here. So what have you taught your daughters over the years from the time they were little to now about serving? Uh, to try to do as much as they can when they have that opportunity, because uh, if it's not you, then it might not get done. So what are your plans for future volunteerism? Are you going to stay with the school, okay. or how long do you plan to do that, or, or what some of the things that interest you in the future? When the uh, seniors come back, they always uh, make a joke about, oh, you're still here, when are you going to quit, when are you going to retire, and we always make the joke that perhaps they would have to drag us out of here. So I'm hoping to stay as long as they would want me to stay. Uh, just raise your hand when asked. Uh, we all have different talents, and you have some God-given talent that, that's there. You just need to find it and your voice.
And how do you feel about Janice nominating you? Well, she's been a wonderful friend. She's been my uh, neighbor at, in the classrooms, and I was very touched that she nominated me and that she thought of it. And I would also like to thank the DAR for this honor also. And all my library aides that I've had over the years, I'd like to thank them as well. Hi, I'm Janice Duncan. I'm a retired art educator uh, from public school 30 years and from Sacred Heart 13. And when I came to Sacred Heart after my public school retirement, my room floated and then finally I, la I, I landed next door to the library. And the person in the library was Shelly Plutzy. And she was the first person to welcome me. She was the first person to help me out in things that I didn't know and anything that I might need here at school. Shelly was your go-to person. And that's kind of how she is. So whether it's here at school or whether it's in the community or whether it's a church or in her own neighborhood, even acquaintance. First person, step up. Well, we'll go get Shelly. She'll do it. And that's exactly what she does. So congratulations. You're a well-deserved recipient of this honor. And I love you. Why did you want to volunteer, and why did you pick Haven House as a place to volunteer? For some time, I'd been wanting to volunteer for an organization because I have always felt called to help people. I grew up with wonderful examples in my family who always helped anyone any way they could, despite their own hardships. I learned early that by giving to others, you yourself end up receiving more than you can imagine. Being a blessing to others fills you up spiritually. But I knew having Asperger's Syndrome... The place I volunteered would have to be the right fit with understanding people. I saw the article in the DAR asking people to come to an open meeting at Haven House for prospective volunteers. I felt truly moved to come to that meeting. I knew they did really good work helping women who desperately needed it, but I never thought of them needing or wanting volunteers. I also knew Haven House is run by women, which made me more comfortable with the whole idea. At that first meeting, I met Melody Ducote, and I knew she and I would get along very well. Melody is very extroverted, and I could tell that she really loved what she did and was passionate about it. I really liked that. So I came to a day of training with Kylie, the supervising house manager, and she was amazing as well. She was very calm and patient. She explained the workings of the house in a clear and confident manner. I came to understand that there are very specific rules that must be followed by everyone. There is very little gray area, and that works perfectly with the way my autistic mind works. I knew from then on Haven House was a place I could serve and make a difference. What do I do as a volunteer? Well, when I met Melody, she gave all of us volunteers a list of options as long as your arm. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I very quickly found my footing. I work in the house manager's office with the advocates and residents. I take crisis calls and help run the house manager's office. I drive residents to their appointments. I cook meals. I organize closets. I sort donations. I do child care. I listen when the residents need to talk about their problems. I do anything that is asked of me because I feel it is my responsibility as a volunteer to support the staff and make their jobs easier any way I can. Every little act of kindness sends a ripple out into the world that expands when people pay it forward. Congratulations to Becky Stockwell, our nomination from Haven House for Volunteer of the Year. We absolutely love Becky at Haven House. We have lots of good volunteers. Many of them could have been nominated, but I'm here to tell you that this is someone special. Becky came to training. She said, you know, I need to step out of my box and do something new and interesting in my life. And she saw our ad in the paper, and here she is. So she came to the training. She jumped right in and said, I'll do anything that you need me to do. We knew she was an animal lover, and one of her first jobs was a call from us and said, oh, we have a family that has two dogs, and they really don't want to give them up, but they need to enter the shelter. And she said, no problem. I'll just take them home with me. We're going, you must be kidding.
And so Becky took those dogs home. She called daily to talk with the family about how they were doing. She transported them to the community dog park so that they could all visit and walk the dog. Uh, from that moment on, we realized this is someone who's going to step up to the plate. Becky's here probably 20 to 30 hours a week. She does everything from cooking to watching children, a job which not everybody's willing to do. And she, she will come when we're, when we're slow on staff or we have extra people here and it's really busy. Uh, Becky knows exactly what the rules are here and our policies and she's willing to follow those to a T. She helps people find clothing they need. She'll do anything we ask. We are so pleased that she made the top 10 nominees for Volunteer of the Year. Uh, congratulations to Becky. My name is Rebecca Winters. I'm married to Matt Winters, who is the city planner for the city of Hopper Bluff. We have two kids, Madeline, who's 20 and is a student at SEMO, and Jackson, who's 18, and he is starting his freshman year of college at Mizzou this semester. We've lived in Hopper Bluff since 2000. I work for Popper Bluff Schools as the AmeriCorps Program Director and have been in that capacity since 2004. Locally, I've been involved for a number of years with the Salvation Army as their bell ringing coordinator. Um, also been heavily involved with the Rotary Club of Popper Bluff, served as a past president, served on their board for a number of years. Also involved with an organization called Community Cares, Boys and Girls Club, um, Bright Futures Initiative for Popper Love Schools, as well as Child Concern Center, St. Vincent de Paul, um, Women Aware, You Can, I probably forgot someone. Well, I would say that my family and my extended family, um, including my church family when I was a young person, really had a, a major influence on me. Um, had some things happen to me in my life that really compelled me to want to be helpful and to try to give back to others. Um, I've always felt strongly about being able to influence positively young people especially. And I've been fortunate that through my career as well as some um, volunteer opportunities, I've had the chance to do that in a number of different ways that have been really rewarding. Uh, one of the big programs that I'm involved in is Project Christmas Promise. Every year at Christmas time, we help to coordinate volunteers to provide Christmas for some families that need help. And it's really gratifying. It's a um, enormously uh, positive experience for me to have each year and have so many other people that are able to be involved in it. It really gives me a lot of satisfaction and brings a lot of peace and contentment to my life. Congratulations to Becky Winters. Through her partnership with the school district and AmeriCorps, she founded Project Christmas Promise, uh, the Rotary Club Good Habits Store at Lake Road Elementary, and she coordinates all the bell ringing for the Salvation Army, among a, no a number of other things she does behind the scenes, like helps us with grant writing and um, wherever there's a need. Uh, she is a true difference maker within our school system and our community, and we wish her luck on getting the nomination this year. Our difference maker of the year is somebody who has touched many, many lives throughout the, their career. They help, with they help with volunteer coordination during local disasters and works with local children who are struggling and places them with mentors and tutors. Our winner was taught at an early age about compassion and servitude. They are instrumental in making sure every children have a wonderful Christmas and even go as far as making sure those families are served before celebrating with their own family. Ladies and gentlemen, the DAR Difference Maker of the Year is...
much. Um, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's emotional for me. A um, good friend of mine in the room tonight sent me a text message earlier and said, you know, good luck, something along those lines. What did I say? Where you at? <laughs> Jeffrey? I stand on the shoulders of a lot of good people. And many of them are in this room tonight. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a lady in this room tonight that, you know, I would not be standing here having done some of the things that I've done if it weren't for her, Brenda <coughs> Allen, who um, absolutely kind of helped me get my start in Papa Bluff when we moved over here um, in 2000. And so many others um, that over the years have left an impression on me and and really made me feel as though I have a debt that I'm just never going to repay. And if I had any words to say to you, it would be this, that I promise you without fail that the blessing that you offer will come back to you three times. Um, that's just how it works. And so every moment, every smile, every opportunity that you have to, to offer someone a little piece of hope, a little piece of goodness, a little piece of Jesus, um, it's going to come back to you and you're going to be blessed for it. So thank you all for what you do to make our community one of the best places ever. <laughs> Uh, because I really do believe that's true. And thank you very much for this honor. I, I really am honored. I appreciate it greatly. And thanks to my family. Matt Winters over there. Maddie Shea. Misty B. And our little Jackson Winters who can't be with us tonight because he's too cool for school up in the zoo. So <laughs> uh, we wish he were here with us. But thanks, Tim. Thank you so much.